Hey guys, on the day before Thanksgiving, I recorded again with the Deplorable Bat Cave. We sat down and we had a more mellow show in which we sat and talked about gaming and gaming in the culture and the way that the game companies are going ahead, sometimes against the wishes of their fans. This was an almost politically free conversation, and I hope that you all enjoy uh, sitting down and talking about our other great passion in this country. And I did do the sound right this time, so you're able to listen to the entire thing, but I do urge you to go and subscribe to the Deplorable Bat Cave as well, and watch their shows on their own channel. Take care, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, degenerates and weebs, although I don't know why you're here, welcome back to the Deplorable Bat Cave podcast. Hey, we've been away for a while. Uh, but before we start and I introduce our ever lovely panelists, I want to say press F, gentlemen, for the passing of the late great Stanley. Because, yeah, that, that was just, we, we lost a great one. Uh. The chat's filling with Fs. <laughs> <laughs> it's fitting. But, uh, so yeah, from my left to my right on my screen, I shall introduce our panelists. Blippity Blop. Have you heard of the High Elves? See you all. Howdy, folks. Caleb. All my jokes are cries for help, dude. <laughs> Jay Edgar. How we doing, everybody? AK-47, your face. Good evening. Short, fat, otaku. Hello. Stefan. Moin. And wandering. Stop right there. You're trespassing at the border. And on that note, I'm sure somebody's voice in this group just called somebody fail note not November, so we're just going to move right into it. Uh... So tonight's top general discussion, gentlemen, is gaming. So we're going to start off with uh, the funny yet, tra yet tragic. Red Dead Retention 2, the sufferer jet that gets the shit beaten out of her. And the YouTuber that's subsequently got his channel removed. She also gets the crocodile treatment and the, uh, what, what's the name of the trope? The twirly mustache throw the woman on the train tracks? Yeah, I, I I tend to call it the Snidely Whiplash. The Snidely Whiplash. The old, uh, the that was the old achievement in the predecessor. Yeah, I didn't think yeah. that was in this current one. No, it's not. No, but it was. One. But uh, and there you had to uh, find a whore, chain her up, and watch her die on the train track. Are you used to that, Stefan? <laughs> oh no. Pussy. Didn't he also feed her to a um, crocodile? Yeah, to the pits, yeah. the crocodiles. Yep. He also threw her down a chasm and then killed somebody, <laughs> the devil. I mean, he did everything. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm that sure one this video is discussed at this point, but in, in, in case anyone hasn't, um, notice the glaringly obvious. Why is it that the feminists didn't have any problem with all the... Uh, male NPCs being killed. It's like, we could kill male Q-Trap clan members, we could kill that person that was uh, 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 at a Nazi in the making. Be because it's oh, not yeah. about equality, that's why. Yeah, there was well, this uh, eugenics guy with uh, racial purity in uh, saint -Denis. Fun fact about the suffragettes, a lot of them were eugenicists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair, they, I, I didn't really see many feminists saying that they had a problem with um, killing the women NPCs in the game. It was just the one feminist NPC in the game. Yeah, that's a good point, I suppose, yeah. because it was. Yeah. Uh, I was reading an article by one, uh, which was quite uh, vomit-inducing. But the point is, is that it, it gave the impression that this was blasphemous or sacrilegious yeah. that that this they figure had been um treated this way you're not allowed to do this to suffragette how dare you but you can do it to a uh, blip weren't the suffragettes in britain straight up terrorists um, yeah but they got better treatment in prison at least 
They had homework. Well, no, they like chucked bombs at police and shit like that. Um, I don't remember. I recall I reading really about. Reading um, about I know that that one of them did a uh, did um, disturb and interrupt a uh, a horse racing event and killed herself that way. I recall reading about a, uh, a group of feminists in the UK in the 1970s who wanted to plant a bomb in a shopping mall. Oh, that's that's much later. He's talking about the Sorry. suffragettes, no? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, the suffragettes, they were the ones who just threw bricks at people. Oh, uh, so, okay, let me clarify this correctly, Sue. Um Are you referring to suffragettes as being terrorists or later feminist groups? The suffragettes that specifically in Britain were known okay. for... I'm not aware... Britain. I'm not aware. So when uh, really when was suffrage in Britain? I actually don't know that. Early 20th century. Okay. It's like you can do yeah, all at the time. Of the where we're slightly ahead of you guys. At the at that time, only men could vote, or one vote per family. Actually, before all of that, um, there were women voters. It had to do with owning property. Mm. Just just as a side note, the. What strikes me is just the sheer lack of being able to learn from experience is that by attempting to demonize this game, it is no doubt led to... Stressing an effect. Yeah, enormous yeah. sales. It's well, like, I, I wasn't too keen on... on uh, well, I'm not keen on shooters, but after uh, the, the uh, reaction to Doom Eternal... Um, I had to go get myself a copy of the original, and I will damn well be uh, pre-ordering. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, the thing is, uh, the suffragette in Red Dead Redemption, she is pretty annoying as well. That was uh, already pointed out. Well, at least they got some things accurate. Yeah, so she is rather well, not at in rather imp important po um, position. So you have to look her up or buy some clothes, which you usually do not do. But the interesting thing is uh, how they presented the KKK. Go on. Which was is a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Yeah, a mm. bunch of total idiots who kill themselves permanently. <laughs> so like they try to uh, try to make a cross and uh, set them on fire the cross falls over uh, to uh, buries two guys under them and uh, well they they burn to death and a couple of others catch fire as well so well yeah that's it's the one KKK of those. I, one of those I'm a genius oh no <laughs> moments in the I and, uh, the the really interesting thing was the Nazi guy in Saint Denis, uh, right uh, next to the paper guy, who I... promotes uh, racial purity. He's like, did you just call me a fool? Then you just chase them down and beat them up. That's what you do. Yeah, but well, that's allowed. Yeah. If we uh, could, uh, if if we could go back to the the whole um, Streisand effect thing, I think. People actually use the the Streisand, or sorry, overuse the Streisand effect because it does have some limitations. For example, um, something that's already quite popular, like Red Dead, yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna benefit much from a Streisand effect. Things I disagree with that. Are, that. I, I think things that are unpopular can become popular through it, but things that are already popular, there's like an upper limit to how much you can actually you can actually help publicity. And and also the problem with Red Dead right now is that it has a lot of negative publicity because the the, the developers were arguing were not arguing the developers were stating that they um they, they were pridefully stating that they were putting in like eighty hour weeks and a hundred hour weeks on this game. Meanwhile, it's a buggy mess. So so even even with the Streisand effect of this of this uh, the suffrage the suffragette happening with with the YouTuber um Shirako, I think what's overshadowing it is just the fact that the, the game is not very good, and people really expected it to be good. Yeah, which is, which is yeah. fair to do. Yeah, I can't, I can't really comment on that because I haven't played it. But well, in, one in thing I found very they will... yeah, the, the, the I, realism I, 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 is I guys, 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 let's blab finish. Um, in, in terms of um, the Streisand effect um, having an impact on an already popular game or, or franchise, um, think back to the hot coffee mod. Um, Away with um, San Andreas, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. San Andreas. Yeah, yeah. Now, don't forget the GTA 
um, series at that time was extremely popular, and the original um, became very popular because of negative publicity. You had kids telling their parents, "Oh, it's a, oh, it's a racing game. Oh, it's a driving <laughs> game." And of course, it, <laughs> it was only the but, and it was able to um, really. Uh, uh, gain much success um, from that negative publicity, but that seemed to go further and further. So with something like the Hot Coffee mod, which um, got the uh, um, developers into all sorts of uh, uh, trouble, um, it it only uh, seemed to um, pay dividends in the long run, as the franchise is, is only grown since then. I, I Do you think that was because of the hot coffee mod, though? Like, is is that I, I the, the hot coffee mod had, had had a? I, I'm saying in in conjunction with the um, overall success of the franchise to begin with. So San Andreas was selling it like hotcakes already. The hot Don't coffee mod the, emerged, uh, emerged later. Yeah. But the infamy of the hot coffee mod only um, helps it added fuel to fire. Yeah, 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 but but right now you kind of expect that from Rockstar to yes. do that, exactly. that shit. Exactly. That, so, that's that's the point yeah. I'm getting at, is that it's the negative publicity has gone so far now that you expect that from uh, a company like Rockstar. I have a question. What if somebody Georgia. in this chat has no idea what the hot coffee mod is? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you want to uh, LDR? Okay. Uh, quick yeah. LDR. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it was a Dutch gamer, maybe in Dutch, some guy from Europe, um, found uh, a rather uh, what's the word? compromising feature to the game, which Rockstar claimed um, wasn't there, or that he, I think that he... They removed access from it. Yes, they removed but they access. the actual code. It was still there, it was just turned off. It, yes, basically. Um, which um, left them with egg on their face. Okay, to be going more detail, the uh, scene in question was basically a sex mini game. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, one thing, kind of to get back to the original point, one thing I found funny about the feminists complaining, saying, "Well, you, well, you can't kill children in Red Dead. Why can't they use that code?" Implying that feminist equals child. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but they kind of do. I mean, yeah. I think you can kill children, can't you? No, 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 no. I, I mean, there I never tried it. Few, there are very few get video games, to my knowledge, that don't have some form of immortality for kids. Uh, Fallout Three doesn't have that because I remember being able to kill kids. Nope, uh, unconsciousness only. Yep, yeah, I remember that too. That you couldn't kill kids in Fallout Three, New Vegas, or Fallout Four. Darren, the kid would just run around. So, Darren. wait, what happens to the kids in uh, Megaton when you blow it up? They become they, unconscious. They, yeah, that is not an on-screen death. That is an off-screen death. It's Basically, what it means that you can't kill kids means you can't just walk over to one and put a bullet in their head. It's through, story, it's through story means you can kids can die like in Fallout 4. Um, the kid who gets bit by the mole rat, you can kill, you can kill him technically. Is that a mercy think... killing, though? Huh? Is that a mercy killing, though? I've not played Fallout 4. No, you have the you have the cure, but if you get bitten, you have a chance to contract the disease. And there's only one one cure left. The thing about about your children, that's a good point because they're smoking kick, kids in the game. <laughs> well, in in Red Dead. Yes. It and was the all... end of the 19th century. Kids were yes. fucking drinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's uh, part of the story, of the main story as well, so that where you see them. But uh, I can't confirm that you can kill kids or not, because I never tried. Oh, well, why would you? you? Like, I can attest, like, it's not part of the main story. It's like one of those random events in Red Dead Redemption 2, where, like, these teens will uh, be a ditz to you, and you'd even be ditz back. But if you chase after them, they'll kind of mud you. But you can uh, basically just shoot and kill them all. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, and teens were adults by that point in the 18th century, too. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. 
And they all were going to say something in this effect. Uh, no, I was just laughing. Oh, okay. Um, Caitlin, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's pretty, pretty much covered it. I haven't played Red Dead Redemption 2, but, you know, when you have a highly anticipated game and you have something that's slightly controversial, you know, people are going to try to exploit it and... That's pretty much what. Yeah, happened. well, and that's what the Streisand effect was, and that's why I disagreed with uh, SFO on that. I mean, I don't have a system that ru would run Red Dead right now, but because of the suffragette thing and all the other controversy, yet, I'm planning on changing that. <laughs> I want to see it for myself. Well, well, yeah. No, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that the Streisand effect doesn't exist. I just think that when something's already popular, it takes. It has. It's less of an effect. That's all. Which, oh, yeah. uh, which I'll grant. Yeah. Granted, you have only a limited amount of players who want to play the game, but uh, with the suffragette, I think um, the thing is, due to the political climate and political shit in games, uh, I think it was quite... I, th yeah, I, yeah. I would describe it as a catharsis. I, I, th I think the suffragette thing, oh yeah, you can't do that. Now I buy the game. I wasn't sure about it before. <laughs> this was because, because of all that political shit. And now I'm sure this political shit is not in the game. And they try to make a good game. But I also have to agree, it, the game has some shortcomings. Especially the... Um, well, you have to... Uh, there's an animation for everything. And if you kill like 10 rabbits, uh, it's annoying. And you want to switch it off so that you can skin the rabbit faster. I always want to skin my rabbits faster. <laughs> I, I don't care so much about the animations. My problem with the game is that it's extremely buggy. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but um, there are people who can just no longer complete the game on their save file because um, main characters have just gone missing. Oh, They're nowhere to be found in the game. And a lot of that has to do with with just the way the game is. It's not procedurally generated. It's it has like a bunch of systems that interact with each other. Because it's an open world game, so you have like animals, and you have various caravans, and you have trains, and you have horses. Like, and and they all kind of interact with each other naturally, and so they're all able to to collide and and essentially kill each other. There's I remember there was um I watched a video of a guy who was doing an escort quest, and in the cutscene of the escort quest it turned out that a train was going by and it destroyed the person he was escorting in the cutscene, and so he failed the quest. <laughs> and and it, it was funny, but, like, a game shouldn't do that, you know? Yeah. All those bugs... I have a question on this, effect. Hmm? Does the, um, the character disappearance occur only if that character has been involved with uh, harming the suffragette? <laughs> that, that's no, a good question, it, it actually. It's pretty much anyone. <laughs> Yeah. Did, did any of them say before they disappeared, um, I have information that could lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton? About disappearing, there's also some really disgusting stuff in a side quest. The murder side quest. Oh, yeah. You see, really... We're, I think we're going to get lost in the weeds here talking yeah. about... Yeah. Um, move on. Well, speaking of buggy messes, Spot. Yes. So Bethesda's <laughs> done it again. Tom well, Howard man. got everybody. He released Skyrim MMO Fallout version. Guess who's it back? Just Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Skyrim with guns and multiplayer. I mean, well, well, considering the first real raid boss is a um, dragon. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, there is already a Skyrim online, and it isn't that bad, and it doesn't look uh, use this shitty engine. Well, I'm still waiting for Skyrim to arrive on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for Skyrim on Ouya. I mean, so uh, yeah, Fallout 76 dropped. It was a colossal fucking mess. Has that dropped now? It, it's already 40% off in certain websites, dude. <laughs> Is it really? I, I get it for 40% off. Give yeah, me yeah. that link. Give me that link, man. I'll get it right now. Is it like All a right, CD right. key? Is it like a key-wise, or is it actual? Oh, okay, how many here have actually tried it? I can't run it. I mean, I, I played Fallout 4, and it's the exact same engine, so... 
Okay. I don't want to run it. Well, okay, okay, based on that, then technically I've played it. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I did uh, I did play the beta. And I had pre-ordered it. And I, I was just... I was appalled. Um, but most, most of all, I, I did find it very, very boring. I, I have to be honest, it wasn't just because of the the mess. There was just aspects of it that I wasn't so keen on from a gameplay perspective. And even if the bugs weren't an issue and there weren't inherent problems with it, I don't know if I would have enjoyed it. So uh, I ended up cancelling my pre-order. And uh, fortunately, it didn't cost me anything. So uh, I got lucky on that one. And well, I didn't have to destroy any uh, uh, shop fronts. Oh, you saw that video, eh? <laughs> I did indeed. <laughs> So I have a question about this because some of you guys are more advanced in gaming than I am because I only have a PS2 still. What is the big deal with everything turning into online only and massive multiplayer online? I mean, it worked for one good game, but... Okay, so can, can I... Um, can I Constant monetization. Anything? Well, can I, can I venture uh, um, some possible reasons for that? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, so ever since WoW, WoW is what really broke the mold for um, MMOs um, wholesale. I mean, yes, you have EverQuest, but EverQuest was insignificant in comparison. Um, WoW brought it to the mainstream, mm -hmm. and with millions and billions of players across the world, you have so many more possibilities. Um, add EA tactics like microtransactions, and you've got a... Uh, at least in theory, a winning formula. Subscriptions, microtransactions, lots of people playing online. What could possibly go? Well, and I understand that, but what I'm venturing here is we've seen over and over again that this was a unicorn, uh, a unicorn, I can't believe I said that, a <laughs> unicorn style of gameplay that really seemed to work for Evercrack and WoW, and it's been shown over and over again that it doesn't really work on many other models. I mean, it yeah, worked a little it, bit for Diablo 2, but you had to be invited into another game if you were always it, online. It, it depends, well, and, and there's, there's always there's that desire. Um, I mean, I, I'm biased in this no. because I do play mainly MMOs. Um, there is that desire to sort of find the next big thing within the MMO genre. But it, the it, problem it, it is... Sort of Simpsons did it syndrome has, has permeated... Um, but the problem is, WoW is kind of the apex of that. You can't really improve it anymore. Um, and also, mm -hmm. WoW is, isn't WoW still hemorrhaging players? It's just they had so many of them at their yes. peak that they're yes. still able to limp along, even though it's missing half a leg, yes. effectively. But I mean, um, I the record in WoW, for, WoW, you know, player here as well, I can tell you that it is bleeding subs. And uh, later, uh, uh, actually, it's a disaster, and, you know, yeah. I, I, Another I, thing I can imagine for Fallout 76 is that they thought it, it would make uh, game design easier because they can scrap all the uh, voice lines and NPCs and all that shit. But, oh my uh, yeah, uh, it was to be fair, Stefan, you had a lot of um, corner cutting going on there. It, it, it's, it's a case of let's use what's essentially a Fallout 4 mod. Um, it was a box of scraps from Fallout yeah. 4. Yeah, yeah the, the, and, ma the map and is good. And, and these, well, looky here. We have players willing to uh, do that for you. Yeah. Yes, uh, Spot actually gave me uh, a link to an article the other day of players actually taking on the part of NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on Serial guys. numbers sold separately. I don't know what's going on with the Cessa. I don't know if, 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 if they're having a bad case of yes men in, in their team or Caleb, know, but... Caleb it just mm -hmm. works I mean, the, the problem was that Blob, actually, Blob and I discussed this last night how this could have actually worked mm -hmm. yeah I had some thoughts on that too actually well, the primary failing is they started off the same as every Fallout game. Mm -hmm. You're the Vault Dweller. Yep. Everybody's the Vault Dweller. Yeah, I understand that entirely. Yeah, that makes no sense. That's, if, the, that's the problem. 
if you could have first first problem in the logic uh, chain. Yeah, you had a missed opportunity here. Well, Look, I I I had a weird thought. It's a bit of a tangent, but if if um, Bethesda said that we are going to make a Fallout game that that is ba that is an RTS that takes place before uh, the bombs drop or leading up to it, that actually might be very fascinating. Because it actually is new and fresh. Mm -hmm. Well, an, an RTS is isn't going to do so well in today's climate. But um, Spark, um, can you but, um, your point? But basically, instead of everybody being the vault dweller coming from a vault, which by the way you can't go back to because plot. <laughs> uh, well, Bob explained the damn plot apparent and spoilers for anybody, but I don't care. Um, apparently. Vault Tech being the bastards they are, decided to release everybody in a specific vault out in the world 25 years later, and they specifically rigged the air system to start to stop working after the 25 years. So the vault would become inhospitable. So everyone's kicked out of the vault after 25 years, period. Now, mm -hmm. the way I'd fix this, just to fix this first problem in the chain, I don't know how much this is to fix everything else, Unfortunately, I don't think the 25 years thing would quite work with, with this, but pick a starting faction. Yes, that's kind of yeah. where I was going, too. And there are so many factions in the game history that you can pick from. This is what we decided. Well, uh, this you is what can't we do the Brotherhood, yesterday. technically, because uh, it, it barely exists. They, they managed to get ESO to work um, by having that faction system. You can choose different races... Yes, there are a lot of problems um, law-wise, but they, with a bit of hand wavium and the, um, yeah. the time period it's set in, they just about managed to get it to work. Well, let, 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 let's see. What would be some of the factions? Legion? Enclave would have to be there. Legion? Enclave. Well, that'd be the Brotherhood. Le uh, Brotherhood Legion doesn't exist too. yet. Legion doesn't exist yet. Um, well, that would be something... Steel, that one's much harder to pull off because of the time period they put it in. Brotherhood only exists still in the bunkers on the West Coast. And you are still assuming as well that we have to yeah. stick with this same time period. When it comes to game when it, when it comes okay. to MMOs, well, you, a simple yeah. see well, there's a very simple solution. And and this is the bit that that is is such a problem with today's um, game development. Come up with new shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, well, I'm just saying some of the historical solution. factions. Well, obviously, they're gonna have a raider faction. They can easily whip one of those up. Yep. Um, they could have a warlord that's akin to the legion. And what about the institute, or is that only in Fallout Four? Uh, they exist, but they're still deep underground under the uh, uh, CIT, Commonwealth Institute of Technology. And I know that uh, the NCR hasn't formed yet. If you're sticking strictly oh, by yeah. that timeline. Yeah, oh, if we if we say that we're stuck at this, it, when it comes to an MO like this, you either want to put it you want to put it before everything and call it only semi canon. That's so fair. Self contained. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You you yeah. have so many opportunities, and with a bit of imagination, you could write untold numbers of factions. Or you yeah, and in, in the end, if you ever decide to switch it off, you can just new. <laughs> Nuke the place and go. Yeah, yeah, and if you insist, you could always add them as DLC. Or I had another idea just as we were talking about this and a way that you could fix that too. Remember from the lore of uh, New Vegas, and I haven't played enough other Fallout games to know if this is the same as everything else. Every vault had a specific purpose while they were underground. They were performing yes. one experiment or the other. So who yeah, says you always have to come out of 76? Yeah. Sorry? What was the question, Jim? Why would you always have to come out of Vault 76? Why can't you pick a vault that's doing an experiment that works for you that's something that you would align with? Mm -hmm. Well, you would have but, to change the title, but other than that... Yeah, well, here's the problem. The way this is, the only, I, yeah, it makes yeah. sense, but the way this is set up is that Vault 76 was specifically... The people in 76 were specifically chosen to go back into the wasteland and reclaim everything 25 years later. Yeah, it's and because they have no creativity. And rebuild ever America. Created. Yeah. Weren't there were only a, some, a, a hundred some odd vault, vaults ever built? Yeah, very, very few. With a couple of private 
um, military, a couple of private bunkers, um, some military bunkers like uh, Mar- uh, it was a Mariposa where uh, uh, where we have the um, uh, Brotherhood come out of. Yes. Or was that Lost Hills? Mariposa, I believe. Actually, coming to think of it, just from just from playing Fallout Three alone, there was like what about 10, 20 volts around DC alone. Well, yeah. I know you came out of one hundred and one because I just started Fallout Three the other day because I finally got it to work on Windows Ten. Yep. Be prepared for all the crashes. I've already seen them. <laughs> you may want to mod it a little bit. It's part of the experience, because, I've, you know. I've already had to mod it just to get it to work. <laughs> well, there's a few things I'd like to add here. Um, first of all, somebody mentioned earlier that um, there was no reason for for Vault seventy six to break down uh, after twenty after twenty five years. That and Vault- that's that was Vault Tech doing. Well, the, the, it's, the, well, no, it's not just because Vault Tech. Um, they mention why in both Fallout three and Fallout four because Vault seventy six was actually mentioned in canon as far back as Fallout three. So it's not like they just they just pulled it out of their ass. They are being consistent yeah. at least, which yeah. I mean, Props. good on Beth- good on Bethesda because they have. I don't know if you guys remember the Fallout Four um, drug fiasco. You guys remember mm-hmm. that? No. <laughs> no. Can you, can you elaborate on that? I suppose. Um, there was uh, I forget which vault it was. It was it was one of the other vaults you could find in Fallout Four. And the whole point of the vault, the the experiment was that everyone who was inhabiting it were um were druggies. They were they were recovering oh, druggies. Oh god, yeah, yeah, the vault might they, be something. Yeah, and they filled the vault with a bunch of drugs. The problem is, um, they filled it with jet, and jet was a drug that was invented after the bomb spell. And people started at, like like uh, t- uh, tweeting one of the people who worked on the game. Uh, how, what's this discrepancy? How come these logs mention Jet, even though Jet wasn't uh, wasn't made till after the bombs fell? And and one of the writers uh, working at Bethesda basically told them all to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> just works, yeah. guys. Yeah, it just I, just how it is. <laughs> I mean, he was just reading Todd's reply. <laughs> but. Uh, Earlier, you, you, someone also mentioned that they're, you were comparing this to um, World of Warcraft, mm-hmm. and I don't think that's actually an accurate comparison. I would not compare Fallout seventy six to World of Warcraft. I would compare it to Minecraft. Yeah, um, um, was comparing fair. it? Uh, it was, well, it was, it was Rust the ESO, and that was in terms one. of lore. It was well, yeah, yeah, but, but like of in... getting a, a single player franchise to work as an MMO, which I think they managed to pull off. To, Largely successfully with ESO, they, they they did, but I don't think uh, Fallout seventy six is really an MMO. Um, yeah, I, I, because I, I like it, 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 yeah. like MMOs have 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 certain qualities that Fallout seventy six doesn't have. Yeah. Fallout seventy six seems to be an online survival game like Minecraft, where yes. well, they're, actually, they're... the closest comparison is a game called Rust. Yeah, R- Rust, and also like the Forest. If you guys have played that. Mm-hmm. I think is also very similar to Fallout 76. But uh, basically, Ark Survival Evolved, arguably. Yep, yep. It, it's it's a lot of like in in Minecraft you can all you can you can like permanently alter the entire map if you want, and you can't really do it in these survival games that we're talking about. But uh, but it, it it basically plays the same. You 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 build shelter and you scavenge for stuff and you survive in an empty world that's completely <laughs> hostile. Um, you you survive in an empty world that's completely hostile, with no NPCs. And with and with very little in the way of, of formal direction, the idea is just to you know, survive the night and then do that repeatedly as you build up your your stock of stuff. So Minecraft was really the first game that really took off, so that that used that that type of gameplay. So I think like whatever genre you would call Minecraft, I guess just <coughs> like like multiplayer survival. Yeah, crafting. <laughs> Minecraft like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, early access survival, you know, crafting. <laughs> but I mean, I've I've played a lot of survival games at this point. The most recent one, actually, the most recent one actually was um, the Forest, and I really enjoyed the Forest. Uh, but 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 Fallout seventy six seems to be a game like that and less like an MMO. Yeah, you you are right, um, as well, and that's I think one of the reasons why I didn't like it is that that's not really my sort of genre. I I, I thought there was going to be much more. 
it it doesn't it. fit and that, that's necessarily again that's that's separate to all the issues with it it's, yeah yeah it, it's not not my sort of game uh, it's a, it's a buggy mess that's that's the main issue is that uh. it Right, but I'm, yeah, I'm not going to fault the they, genre. They, 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 they tied like what do they do? They they tied um, movement speed to frame rate. Yes, yes. yeah, that's that's like that. that's a problem. Just uh, it is something that's online, and it, it's still tied. All they did was just just cap the FPS. Okay, uh, hold okay. it. They they tied movement speed to frame rate. Isn't that a trick they used back it, with older computers? They tied the game speed to the computer's clock speed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Something well, well, why are we looking back to the now. why are we looking back to the eighties and nineties for how to build video games? <laughs> because it just worked. They they did that shit on the Super Nintendo with like Star Fox, yeah. the original with like the FS chip. They had to do that. You mm-hmm. could do that in Goldeneye. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. They used to be able to get the crazy um uh timings. Well, actually, that's why the turbo button existed on so many computers during the transition. It's all the, turbo... the higher clock speeds. Well, well yeah, the turbo, turbo edition. It, it's it's an anti-turbo. <laughs> yeah, the turbo button actually slows the computer down. Funnily enough. Yes. But some manufacturers got smart and said, uh, "Actually, turbo buttons on by default, and that's the high speed. Then you turn it off when you need to." Okay, here's, here's one of the things that really bothered me um, that certainly wasn't a gameplay aspect um, or a genre-based aspect is that this game was actually marketed in, um, you had the uh, the beta um, which was, was what, two weeks before launch? About that, That's yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's an open yes. beta. I guarantee you they had a series of closed betas and alphas before That's not, that. Th- this is... That's. I don't even remember stuff. I, 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 I can't even think what, um, what what sort of um, demo excuse you could come up with to try to uh, look at this as favorably know. as possible. But when you're two weeks um, uh, from launch, and there are inherent problems, there's next to nothing no you could do it. to to change that. There you go. That, that, those are all problems that pretty much arose with launch. The price of yeah, and how many fifty gigabytes patches were already out for Fallout seventy six? Oh yeah, I heard that they also got another and like forty nine gigabyte that... patch. So yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, if you have a disc and then like I install two hundred gigabytes of it and the rest is oh, oh but Stefan, the... this is the best bit. You don't. Have it. <laughs> I remember you, you open <laughs> the box <laughs> and it's a little bit of paper. PC, well, yeah, of course, I, I was thinking more about the console version right now, because on PC, a disc isn't really a thing anymore. It's more a thing on consoles, and yeah. Yeah, but that, that's totally not an excuse for a uh, AAA rated company to cut corners and put... No, absolutely not. <laughs> well, that's what everybody's doing now. Even the console guys are releasing stuff in a hurry to get it out, and then patching as it, as it goes that, that that's true but you have don't have a 50 gigabyte patch which is basically basically the whole well, game well there is a company that has kind of figured out the whole we are releasing the game but we will do serious changes to the underlying uh it just it, even underlying concepts of the game as it goes on that's paradox uh with you see with both stellaris and surviving mars but they change the game in response to the fan base and what the fan base wants which is probably the smarter move Mm. does anyone have anything else they want to add to this specific topic well i do want to talk about the mmo aspect of it because it's so weird to see this failing i remember when wow came out when my uh, best friend was still alive we were talking about it and he was going through the Blizzard timeline and how they tended to do things. When we were talking about it and WoW was coming out, Diablo 3 was first being talked about and first being talked about being released. And one of the first things that he said with just a giddy point of 
eagerness in his voice was the fact that Diablo 3 was going to go through, get two expansions, and then we were going to have World of Diablo. There are certain aspects of this where it works, but it's just an almost an always online thing where you're always interacting with other people. Doesn't seem to work for everybody and everything no. anymore. No, but the thing is, though, is, Jed, is that you have differing um, tiers of, of how uh, gated these games are to being online. So you have quite a few that are instance based, or they might have a social hub where that, that might be the only place where you can see everyone else online. Right. And then you'll form parties and things like that. But it's interesting that you arrived at Diablo because uh, Spark would like to bring us out to the next topic. Diablo, in, well, they call it immortal, but Diablo irrational seems to be a little bit more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the only people problem. who are irrational are those who do not have cell phones. You might end up having a problem, dude. Come on. <laughs> no, I have, to, I have to ask you, gentlemen, guys. Uh, is this an out of season April Fool's joke? I hope so. No, no this is legit. <laughs> and then no. they try- <laughs> then they try to get. They were casting shade on the people that got pissed off because the build up was. They they thought we were getting a brand new Diablo game. Yeah, Instead, we're getting. Well, we're spot, you want to give some background to maybe the okay. people who are living so, under a rock who haven't heard the right, story. So, so, BlizzCon, those that know about it, it's you pay to go to this Blizzard convention. You pay a lot of money to go to this Blizzard convention. How much money? So, so this is for so much money. fans. So they paid. They were promised a teaser for an upcoming Diablo game. They go there. They, they're they getting excited. It's a new Diablo game. It's a phone game. A Chinese copy of a <laughs> phone game. It's a reskin. Yeah, a reskin. Of... Game. It looks well, like a reskin of an existing Chinese game. Look, it's, it's a flag, if, if I recall if correctly. You know what? how they could have handled this if they were actually releasing a true new Diablo game, but they added on to the back saying, hey, we're also taking Diablo 2, which is arguably the best, uh, most popular version, and most popular Diablo game out there, and we are and we are uh, uh, porting it to mobile. We're remastering it, and, port, and also we are um, uh, we're also uh, porting it to mobile. If they did that, you know what the fans would have said? That's neat. All right. Yeah. We're well, also getting a new game. Hooray! Well, he, well here's the thing. Uh, immediately after pe- the backlash started, because this, because let's face it, luring people to spend money for your convention only to give them, by the way, we're giving you a phone game, is a load of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And pe- uh, obviously, backlash started erupting on the internet. Then they had the gall to blame the people that were pissed off, say, calling them all entitled. <sighs> because that because that has worked so well in the past, dude. I mean, yeah, and most that, of them had to sell kidneys to even go to BlizzCon in the first place. <laughs> that that's the that's the pot calling the fucking white porcelain china black. You know, you, how could you have salvaged the whole Diablo Immortal uh, announcement? You you should have done the same thing Bethesda did. They really they announced a, a mobile Elder Scrolls game but at the same time they just showed a uh, logo for the next other scroll six well there are if, other if ways they that they had, could have done it too but go ahead if they had at, if they had at the end you know said hey i know this is not what you're you're expecting but here's something else and you just show a fucking number four in the background and everything was for good at being forgiven and <laughs> even a mobile game would have been fine if it was on a console like the switch mm-hmm. for example yeah that would also have been fine. And if it was an actual game and not something to get the money out of your pocket. Because, I mean, for all its flaws, Diablo 3 actually is kind of decent in consoles. Though, uh, what was it, Path of Exiles kind of stole all its thunder. True. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Path of Exiles is a, um, it's a good example of a developer that listens to its web. Yeah. At least it used to, I don't know if it still does, but there's one thing it used to be known for is that they were quite um, cooperative in tune with their with their player base. If you go to playdiablo4.com, it just opens the Path of Exile website. <laughs> <laughs> well, there... uh, speaking of which, surely um, I want to say last week they released that yes, they are making a Diablo Four. But didn't they? Originally, wasn't there some weird shit 
with denials yeah. going on. It was leaked out that a Diablo 4 could have been shown at BlizzCon, but they scrapped it last minute. And now the uh, Blizzard is like denying anything about it, but we all know. Well, if I remember correctly from the forums, they were actually working on a world of Diablo right after Diablo 3's Necromancer patch came out. But they were scrapping that as pretty much as soon as it got wind out there. Yeah. But what what reason could, aside from just really trying to hard sell the mobile uh, version, what possible reason could they have for scrapping the um, Diablo 4 sneak peek or, or announcement? Well, see, and that's... Incompetence and stupidity. <laughs> well, see, there were other ways that they could have gone with the... Uh... With uh, the mobile version of Diablo 2, who remembers Final Fantasy 15 when it came out? <laughs> yeah, the original. It was pretty bad, wasn't it? Well, Squeenix had their uh, had their console version, and then they had uh, pretty much a reskin of Game of War Fire Age that they put on for mobile, and it was supposed to be an add-on to the Final Fantasy 15 story. That's the route that they could have gone with Diablo 4 if they were going to do a, if they were had. Dead set on doing a mobile version, which, with the way technology is going, I'm not completely opposed to, but you've got to do it right. No, but they want their consumer base to walk along with them and eat everything that they delve into. Mm-hmm. I keep I saw this popping up in a lot of. Uh, to be fa- to be fair, it was a lot of uh, people in gaming Twitter spheres. Uh, Consume product, don't ask questions, then get excited for next products. Yeah, I've seen that a few times too. Oh, yeah. That's what they expect our role to be. But they forget mm. we made them. Yeah. And I think this year is going to be uh, another sort of hard slap to developers to realize that we're not just going to be pushed over, we're not just going to buy their shit. Without... Yeah, but, but uh, the gamers don't want to play shitty games. Well, ex- except for people like James Rolfe. Or... Oh, <laughs> no, Rol- Rolfe does it for shits and giggles and for the entertainment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, most people don't want to play shitty games. They want to play good games. They want to come home after work, then you play, want to play good, good, games to fun. Good, good game that they enjoy for whatever. And then go go to bed, work, and re- repeat. They don't want to play crap, especially when they have to pay such huge amounts of money for the game, like hundred bucks or more. Hey guys, for... just a quick heads up, we're at uh, forty-seven minutes. All right, we should probably just move on to the next topic. Yeah. So. Right. Uh, yeah, of course the people are pissed. Speaking of people being pissed. Sony. What did they do? What did they do? (laughs) So, apparently, Sony International now answers solely to their U.S. branch, which, by the way, moved to California. Uh, What the possibly going on? Feeling about this? What the possibly going on about that? So, is that is that why they're censoring everything? (laughs) Yes. The yeah. censorship is go- okay. So those who don't, who aren't in the know, uh, pretty much every platform allows the sale of visual novels on it at this point. There's yep. a there's a specific one known as Necopara. It's released on every system. It's been on every other platform except Sony's. It's rated M. Because it has nudity. So, Sony's has it edited to the point where the ESRB rated it. E for everyone. Uh, how? Th- this what? is more pointless than a PG-13 cut of Deadpool. They've told... They're, they're telling developers to uh, to censor their games in the 11th hour now. This is like buying a Walmart CD in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, the problem is... Uh, well, yeah. I think the seat is still in Japan. The problem is is that the U.S. branch has taken over, and the Japanese let them. And well, yeah, 
Can, can we can we require that to be in any power in an American company, you have to be just as patriotic as the guys who run Black Rifle Coffee? That's the minimum level of patriotism to be a, <laughs> be a manager of a company. It would fix so many problems. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, so uh, there's the there's that issue uh, on top of the fact that they're already uh, apparently they're already talking PS5. Uh, no, it's maybe. they. They are not. That's what uh, the users are speculating. Yeah. But also, yeah. Sony also pulled out of EA, the next EA, and E3. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, E3 has been a nothing burger for years. People get hyped over nothing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, d- I don't know about that. I don't know about that because lots of really interesting games come out of it. Yeah. Yeah, but the times change and technology changes, so the uh, the the normal fares aren't a thing anymore. Yeah, it's like you, you they want to have that own. You I'm of the opinion that the way to do it now is basically do what Nintendo does: have a, have a direct, have the have their own press conference. That's what they do. All the yeah, time. have the have your own press conference with I don't know. Um, just just get a, fo- a football stadium, do it there or whatever, or and uh, do a web stream. Just well, just do a web stream. Period. Yeah. Yeah. There's no exactly. reason for everyone to be gathered up for that anymore. Yeah. yeah. They're still locked down behind a paywall spot. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah, but it's well, there's, cheaper, there's something right? really fun about about like, going to a convention and and being there in person, you know. Well, yeah, yeah you like, see all the weeaboos weird. that are walking around. I'm just of the maybe it's just because I've become jaded as fuck over the years, but it seems like the magic of the E3s are just gone. I would, yeah, I would. Oh, it, do, it doesn't help spot that that we've just had hype train after hype train after hype train and just. Uh, it's not not not, not only that you do, you don't know how it uh, is because behind the scenes how high the costs are for that shit. Uh, I'm pretty um, I know a bit about uh, the German sea bit, and behind the scenes it's a disaster. Every now and then the organizers change what the mess is for. Sometimes the stuff the stuff forget technical issues because it seems like every time there's some fucking technical issue. Yeah, why can't developers release a completed game anymore? Yeah, not not only that, but then there are exorbitant prices. So what what do you pay for uh, for a medium stand on uh, E three? A hundred thousand bucks or something like that, perhaps. Yeah, Which but is... Stefan, you're gonna get that lovely enameled pin for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and okay. that's I mean, the... okay. As someone who used to watch like e like e three related content, where you know people got were getting hyped and excited, you look at like last year's. It was just shit show after shit. Show. It was just it was all it was all pomp and flair without substance. They were more concerned about the about the decorations and the frills and the actual games. They probably put more time into it than the actual games. To be fair, there were some interesting showcases last year, but it was more about... It, it seemed like all the news was focused on the sideshows and the actual material. I mean, if we keep going down this road, E3s are just going to be nothing but a place for cosplayers to gather when they're between cons. <laughs> yeah. Or just a bunch of, uh, like, I don't know, previews and trailers. That, that's that's, that's, all that's what uh, all the fans will get. Just a meetup, just a place to meet some people you don't see all year. Kind of like VidCon. We're not. No, no, no. no, We're no, no, no. <laughs> di- di- different kind of people. Yeah, but very different kind of people. But no, I'm like, okay, you take something like. All right. Because I see this video a lot, and the, the raw emotion it still brings me to tears every time. Uh. The Twilight Princess E3 reveal. Oh. Oh. I... That level of hype and emotion still brings me to tears. Yes, but Boy, you have yeah. to remember one thing. Twilight Princess was a good game. Yes, yes it was. By the way, GameCube version only. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, but what I'm really getting at is, you look at the stuff now, it just seems dulled 
and jaded and corporatized. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like Andrew WK, but he had no business being on that damn stage. <laughs> um, I, I feel the amount because I I mean, I, I grew up reading these magazines that were talking about E3, and I, I always dream of going there, you know. But now well, you, you you look at it and it's just, I don't know. It's... Yeah, I mean, we have equivalents here in, in Europe. We have, uh, what was the last one I went to was Eurogamer in... Was it Eurogamer or e, uh, EGX in 2015? And I got a lot of good swag there, actually. Um, and I found it useful because I went there really just to test one game. Uh, well, an expansion for Guild Wars 2 at the time. And I did find it useful. But the amount of, as Spot says it, the, the, the corporatism, and it's just it's so... I think it, okay, it, it makes him feel soulless. Okay, to be fair, I think I'm responsible for this one. We did lose ourselves here. We the topic was Sony and what the fuck they're. Um, <laughs> I f I don't know how many of you do. I follow uh, Raging Golden Eagle on Twitter. I don't even know who that is. He, I mean, they, he and his fan base have been going off about Sony. <laughs> What did Sony do? Again, they're censoring. They're oh, censoring right. every game on their systems, and they're forcing developers to censor them at the eleventh hour. What happens when Red Dead comes out on Sony? It's already out, and nothing it's happened. Already. It's only about uh, sexual content, I think. And basically, they have to disable jiggle physics. They have. They can't have new, any kind of nudity, or even yeah. suggested nudity. But I love Jiggle Physics. Wait, 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 Spot, hang on a second. Is this for the American market or or for yeah, the world 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 global, global, worldwide? Global. Wait, 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 wait. global? Yeah. There, there is no yeah, world so American so market wait, anymore. Wait, 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 wait. How is this going to work in Japan? Because Sony Japan now answers to Sony America, which is in California. Ooh, I think they're going to get a bitch slap from their Japanese fan base. Oh, the, the Japanese. Not, not only that, yeah, but I've got a feeling that Japanese. okay, it's everyone. Uh, everyone will be pissed about that shit. A uh, no quick question, Spark. Would, will like it. Isn't Sony Japan technically more powerful than Sony America? Apparently not, because Sony America. I mean, shots. who owns who? Who physically has the deed to the other? I don't know that you can draw that distinction without a difference anymore. Because if Sony Japan owns Sony America, if things get fucked up enough, they will send Japanese think, businessmen to take over, and it will be I, a I, fucking slaughter. I, I think Robocop what happened was, was I think they like shuffled it around so that now it's the American the American branch that owns the Japanese branch. Oh god damn it, Sony, you fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. On top of that, they moved their corporate headquarters to the middle of social justice. Central, really. Yeah, but 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 uh, the power should still be in Japan. I hope it's not. So, if if it gets bad enough, Sony Japan will be spun off and it spun. will survive. Whereas Sony America will, will be allowed to languish and die. Yep, exactly. So I would well, say this is a victory of sorts to make up for the N sixty four PlayStation Wars, but this is Pyrrhic and Ashen. I mean, this well, well, looks yeah, like they're. they're uh, Again, forcibly censoring every game on their platform, but they're doing a special focus on Japanese games. Oh my! Oh, there's a lot of jiggle physics like in said, Japanese games. Like, like I said, DOA, yep. Send Ran Kagura, a whole bunch. Well, at least Steam is basically laissez-faire at this point, barring yeah. I think it was what um, yeah, vapor, exactly. vaporware and shovelware and uh, things that are straight up illegal. Well, yeah, actually, they've they've, they've officially uh, they're releasing them completely uncensored. Yeah. So yeah, Steam, uh, Sony just killed their own brand. They were already in big financial trouble. Yeah, that's not good. But well, I, th I there's still a bit of hope. An hour, guys. Well, well, I mean, yep. th things seem to move move in cycles, right? Like because. This generation, I guess it's last generation now that the Switch is out. Uh, last generation, 
Nintendo has been off doing its own thing since basically the GameCube. So it's been Microsoft and Sony. And with PS4, Xbox One, it was very clear that Sony was the victor. And then in the previous generation, when it was 360 and PS3, I think the 360 uh, edged them out at the end. And, and for the first few years, the yeah. PS3 was just nothing. Well, uh, the big problem the PS3 had... It's, I, uh, I have to disappoint you. They are just about even. There's well, no, no, no. no. He, they were just about even. But the problem is, when it came to the library, the 360 always had the better games, except for the Sony exclusives. Um, and the reason why was because... Sony with a PS3, if you know anything about the hardware, they didn't use an Intel or AMD processor. They used, I think it was an IBM cell processor, which yeah, but, no but, one uh, but Sony knew how to program. No, Only the, Sony knew how to program on it. The The problems are twofold. First, it was a single core main processor with seven graphics chip-like things. Yeah, like pseudo. That works together, device. and th yeah. that wasn't the worst part. Yeah. The worst part was the NVIDIA chip that was yeah. based on the sign of X uh, architecture. And that one, um, if you do shader and a texture thing at the same time, the texture thing starts the uh, shader pipeline. That's a totally crappy thing that uh, NVIDIA fixed with the G80. So and with that piece of shit, uh, yeah, the performance is crap if you don't optimize uh, really brutally on that system. But then you can forget the PC and uh, Xbox 360. So, well, so uh, in short, is uh, multi-platform games usually run way better on Xbox 360. Yeah. Well, we're we're off getting lost in the weeds, and we're over an hour. So, should we have one more topic? Uh, I, I've actually got to go, unfortunately. I've, no I've hit my limit. Thanks, right. thanks for joining okay. us, Sisyphe. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, though. It's been fun. Yeah, it has. Yeah, man. Take care. Well, next, well, since we brought it up, the last topic, and this is going to be a, sh well, the next topic, I could say, because it's going to be a short one. And this was brought to my attention just before the stream started. So the Xbox One is becoming a literal box. <laughs> No more, no more disc tray. <laughs> you knew it was coming. When's the last time you had a physical disc? Uh, um, last time I bought a PlayStation game, actually. Um, yeah, this, this, the funny thing is, uh, uh, if you talk about consoles, uh, especially on PlayStation 4, the physical disc is usually cheaper in a store than the download version. Oh yeah. For yeah. example, God of War is usually sixty nine ninety nine in a, in the PlayStation Store and fifty nine ninety nine uh, in a it's a physical copy, and that seems to be the norm with at least Sony games. So they don't really compete with the retail uh, chains. Well, I got so with that. So, so with that, and uh, the last uh, I heard was around just fifty percent of uh, the games were download versions. I got the physical disc for StarCraft Two when I played that, but I found out very quickly that it was just a vestigial organ. It wasn't actually useful for anything anymore, and I think Xbox is starting to realize that. Yeah, maybe, but. I don't, I don't know. It's just it's just uh, at the moment from what I know it's just the Xbox One S. So the cheap the cheaper version that should have been discontinued years ago anyway. So um that one with a version without a disk drive they tr they will try. So if it fails well they know they can't do it. <clears throat> I honestly it's don't just I don't like this physical or this digital copy only thing. I don't like the way this trend is going, because if the companies decide that they just want to trash everything and to hell with everybody, you've lost out on all your games and everything you've put that much money into. Uh, the th the thing is, with consoles, you can still get used copies because the copy protection is the disc. With uh, PC games, that move to account bound uh, bound mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Years ago, so well, with PC yeah. you don't often even have an optical drive, but with consoles most stuff is still on disc. 
I think that started with Valve back in the day. I remember. Exactly. Yes. Half Life Two and Valve. Exactly. And it's yeah. mostly um, but... the the last physical thing I got for PC that was really um, disappointing was Dishonored Two. It's l around thirty forty gigabytes, and one DVD is in the box. <laughs> well, I've got so a physical of, copy of Portal. Of that, of that uh, disc, you install, you use it to install around three gigabyte and to download another thirty. Well, yeah. Jed, what, what? To, to to answer your point, I I agree with you, but I think it's an inevitability. I think that's simply the way technology is going. I understand yeah. that, but that just feels like these game companies are going to make off with, or have the oh, opportunity. I don't think they're going to, but yeah. they have the opportunity to make off with your hard-earned money for nothing. I agree. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, actually, um, Nintendo, the way that they're doing with their with their cartridges. Is actually faster than, you know, using up all your RAM loading off off the hard hard drive. That was always the angle. That's uh, one of the main well, reasons we're, why we're, we're talking about stuck with the cartridge with the N64. Well, this but uh, now that they've shrunk them for the uh, DS, 3DS, and now especially the Switch. I mean, they're essentially like uh, oh crap, words micro SD cards now. Yeah, which are just basically little SSDs, little flash drives. Yeah, yeah, little flash, flash drives. drives, which load really, really fast. Yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah, and with uh, mobile things and like two, three gigabytes, maybe four, four to, uh, to eight, you can get away with flash cards. Actually, but... I, I believe the biggest I remember seeing is like sixty-four gigabytes. So you could fit those really, really huge games on a goddamn SD card. Uh, micro SD are actually a bit larger right now, like, like 256, 512. Well, Jesus. here's the thing that I have, the problem that I have with it. When, let's say, Saudi Arabia or Iran throws the nuke overhead and doesn't nuke one of our cities but blows it off in the atmosphere and the EMP goes off, everyone that's got <laughs> digital copies is going to be shit oh. out of luck. And I'm going to grab no, my the, disc the, of Diablo the, the 2. Thing is actually... That's not how EMPs work. <laughs> the thing EMP is actually... won't fuck up your computer. It will actually destroy the power grid. That's it. The computers and cell phones will still technically function. It's just the bigger antennas will be fried. And whatever damage you get from the overloaded power grid. Any uh, Anything else to, to add to this topic? Uh, wondering, Caleb? Nah. Well, well uh, in short, it's just... Uh, a test run for the Xbox 2. Well, I don't need to worry about the Xbox because I already have a PC. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And right now, the Xbox One is... Well, let's not talk yeah. about it. They always had the intention of killing the used disc market, so <laughs> this is their, their attempt at it again. They tried with the, the, the original launch. The original plans for the Xbox One was to not, not allow that. And now, you know, they're going to try to go for it again. See what happens. Impossible. So wait, that eliminates their, all their... So wait, they got rid of their only vaunted selling point. Uh-huh. Of backwards compatibility. They got uh -huh. rid of it. Uh -huh. Yep. Those utter dumbasses. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, backwards compatibility. That, that thing has a serious problem right now because you have to have payment options in your Microsoft account to actually buy backwards compatible Xbox 360 games, which makes no sense. Wait, wait, wait. So wait, if you if I had an Xbox One and I still had a copy of, say, Halo 3 from 360 and I put it in the disc tray, it wouldn't that, run. That, I'd have to no, buy no, it no. In, in, the, in, the, in that case, it would download the... Uh, what was it? What was the game? I use, I use that as an example. The, the whole 20, um, eight, uh, 6 to, to 10 gigabytes from the internet. If you have a larger one, it's like 20, 30 gigabytes. And the CD is just used as a dongle. So that would work. I meant uh, a di digital copy from the store. If you don't have a, the disk and want to buy it in the store, 
and you have money in your Microsoft account, like 50 bucks or so, you, get, go, uh, you got a prepared card, and you want to do, uh, buy a uh, Xbox 360 game like Red Dead Redemption, because it's played best on Xbox One. You can't buy that without credit card, PayPal, or bank account number in your Microsoft account. Except, wow. except if you have it in Xbox 360. So let me get this straight. The only ones not fucking up right now is Nintendo. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Sounds but, strange, but yeah. Yes, pretty okay. much. <laughs> Nintendo for a better out of one console generation now, didn't they? Yeah. Wait. Spot. They've been around since the late 19th century. They play the long game. <laughs> they had to get a win every once in a while. All right. Uh, do you want to wrap things up, Scott? Uh, well, I do have one thing gaming related, Keck or Cringe. Um, Gentlemen? Okay, go, go on. ahead. Hasbro is based. <laughs> so, in, in they, uh, elabor uh, elaborate for the uh, four people watching. So apparently, it's a shining light in the darkness. Hasbro has released a new version of Monopoly, like they do every so often. Oh Jesus! This one is entitled Monopoly for Millennials. Ah, that feels so great. So apparently, Hasbro decided to take. Completely take the piss out of millennials. Uh, the cover features the Monopoly icon, rich uncle, Min uh, rich uncle penny bags with a cup of coffee, earbuds, and a medal labeled "Participation." Huh. <laughs> the, tag <laughs> the, the tagline on the cover reads, "Forget real estate; you can't afford it anyway." <laughs> oh, this, this is beautiful. Um, so the board retains the traditional go to jail space. There is a major difference in this version of the game. You don't collect money. Instead, <clears throat> instead you collect experiences as they traverse the board. Such as oh my God. such as parents' basement, thrift shop, and farmers market. Money doesn't always buy a great time, but experiences whether they're good or weird, last forever, says the game's description on the webs on Walmart's website. The description also notes that adulting is hard. Okay, I'm going to go to Best Buy and trade my experiences for a Nintendo Switch. You think they'll go for it? One hopes. <laughs> Your what experience has caused an illegal operation and will now shut down. Can so I trade them? Can so, I trade my experiences as a way out of this country, or...? Can I trade <laughs> no, my experiences uh... <laughs> for a hooker? <laughs> That'd be great. But apparently, uh... But I looked in some more details, some... Cool places and destinations. Uh... Collect experience points by visiting the hottest destinations from your friend's couch, to the vegan bistro, to a week-long meditation retreat. When you get enough spot, do you level up? Apparently, they have um, 64 experience chips. They're a skill tree? <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the sad thing is, this game's, ex this game's sold out almost everywhere. <laughs> I can, yeah, I of course it everything. is, because everyone wanted such a game. Just... I have a question. Yeah, I really want... Does anybody I, win I this really game? I really want to know this. Oh, sorry. Everybody wins. There you oh, go. Yeah. There it is. Wait, guys, I'm on Amazon right now, trying to look at this. I found it. The cheapest I can see it going for is forty nine eleven with free shipping. Oh, I so, so Hasbro won. Yeah, I really want to know the sales of that game, to be honest. Well, yeah. it's sold out everywhere. It's going to do fucking well. Apparently, Walmart was sold out in less than 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, but how many? That's the question. Was it 20? Was it 200? Was it well, two, uh, 2 million? 
physical locations and website. Yeah. But how many games did they have? Probably, I would give it about three digits, but 100 maybe? 100,000? I don't know. So yeah, there's actually news articles everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, USA Today, The Guardian, NBC News, Weekly Standard. Uh, yeah, people are pissed. Yeah, the cheapest I see right now is like it's sixty dollars on Amazon right now. Mm -hmm. so, Damn! Uh, How much was it originally retailing for? Well, supposed to retail for twenty bucks. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. It's been flipped hard. There's only eleven stock left right now. On Amazon. We're at an hour fifteen, guys. All right, yeah. we're gonna go ahead and call it then. All right, folks. Uh, I'll give my panelists from my left to my right closing thoughts on the night. Blah. <clears throat> See that mountain? You can climb it. See well. Have a good night, gentlemen. Caleb. Never forget, dudes. Mods will, fi models will fix our game for free. Jagger. If you watch the stream, there will be a few caps in it for you. Stefan. Yeah, thank you for having me. And it can't uh, get much worse anyway. Why did you fucking jinx it? <laughs> <laughs> When you go to sleep at night, Stefan, <laughs> and you lift yeah. up the duvet, you're going to see Merkel there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Wandering final thoughts. I am NPC Orange Man Bad. Uh, my closing thoughts. Um, you don't I'm, have any. No, my only closing thought is I'm too broke to actually get this board game. Mm -hmm. That is my only thought right now. I want this damn board game, and I can't afford it. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it looks like it's an American-only thing. It was, sounds American like it. Was. But all right. Um, with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us once again for the Deplorable Bad Cave podcast. I do apologize, but schedules have to sync up in order for this to happen. I will indenture to have my slaves, I mean panelists, be more prudent in the future. Till then, next time. <laughs>